what, um, what do you, have you found most challenging through this process? Um, just managing my time and, um, you know, always making sure I get my workouts in and, you know, having to go different places. I've been to L.A. and New York and, and just kind of all over the place and, um, you know, get everything in, but, but also make sure I'm doing what is important. Thank you, well, can you give us an idea of what, what a typical day is like in your world? Um, when I'm back in San Francisco working out, we go um, from, you know, wake up at 6 and we do basketball from 7.30 to 10.30 or 11. Uh, then we have a little bit of time off and we do uh, our strength and conditioning workouts. And then we uh, go back at night and either shoot or play. So is there any downtime? I get to eat here and there. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> we... Uh, I mean, yeah, we we have our days off, but I mean, that's that's the way it should be right now. That's all I'm really focused on is uh, working and trying to get better. So, now are you under the assumption you're going to the Clippers, or do you foresee something happening? Uh, yeah, I'm playing it as if I don't know right now, um, I, in which I don't. Um, so, I mean, I'm not guaranteed anything, and you know, I'm I'm going through it just like everybody else is. So when Dunleavy comes out and says we're definitely drafting, you don't. Don't put much stock in that. <laughs> don't believe him. Um, <laughs> let's say um, I believe him. Um, you know, as possibly one of my you know next coaches, I believe him. Um, but uh, you know, anything can happen. And that's the way I'm looking at it. And you know, you never say never. So you know, I'm, like I said, I'm just going through it like uh, I have no idea. Um, yeah, hopefully, I mean, I can show that. I think a lot of people have the idea that. All I do is dunk, and all I do is make layups, and you know, hopefully, I can show them that I'm a little more versatile than that. That I can, you know, score a little bit from outside, and I can dribble a little bit and be more of a, a one-dimensional player. Um, I mean, you see these guys. I've seen some of these guys since high school. You know, you see them every summer and then all that, and uh, you know, to be around them again is great. And you know, see what everybody else is doing and where they're working out and, and how it's going for them is good. What things have you enjoyed about this process? What's been your favorite part of this whole thing? Um, some of the restaurants have been pretty good. <laughs> um, food comes up. Yeah, yeah, food. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a big part of my life. Um, but, I mean, no, just getting to meet people and, um, you know, different players that I've gotten to meet and uh, getting a perspective from those guys and kind of uh, <clears throat> taking advice from them has been great. I'm sure it's going to be the number one pick. What, is, what does that honor mean to you? Uh, I mean, it means a lot, but, you know, to kind of piggyback what they said, it's, you know, going number one and going number three or, or four or five, it doesn't change what kind of player I am. I'm still the same player and I still do the same thing. So to me, you know, it doesn't make me better to go number one. But, I mean, it's definitely a goal and it's um, definitely an honor. So, you know, it, it's humbling. Blake, did the late win in Tisdale have much uh, impact on your game at all? He did. He, um, I didn't really get to know him until I was the uh, middle of my freshman year at Oklahoma. Um, but, you know, the influence he had on my my game and my life, you know, just the way he looks at life in general and the, the way he views it, and it's just, um, it's, it's a positive influence and, um, you know, something I'll always remember. Given your circumstance, how many teams are you going to work out? Um, right now, we have one workout scheduled, um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know other than that. We'll see after that. They have all eyes on you out in public, uh, restaurants, the theater, whatever. Um, you know, you just got to know that there's people watching you, and that um, you know you got to be a positive, uh, positive role model, and, and not do, uh, not put yourself in bad situations. Like five years from now, what do you think your life will be like? What do you think it'll be? Hopefully, I'll still be playing basketball. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to be a um, a guy that's really helping a team make a run at championships, and a guy that. Um, has really improved his game and, and has, um, you know, had a, you know, is halfway through or starting a great career. Blake, did you ever, were you done answering that question? Yes, Sorry. Um, did you ever really warn any advice? If you come back, you got to dedicate yourself to it and, and, you know, believe in 100% and you'll be fine. And if you don't, you'll be fine too. So either way, you know, I, I'm here for you and, you know, if you ever need anything, just let me know. Did his decision surprise you at all? Um, a little bit. I mean, I'd heard, you know, people said so many things about him leaving and him staying that, you know, I, I just kind of took it as it was. And, um, you know, I'm, glad, I'm just glad he came to a, a decision that he was happy with. If someone described you as the next blank, sort of a certain player, who would you 
wish that to be, or who would you say you model your game on? Um, you know, I really like how um, Amari Stoudemire came in the league, and, and I feel like we were kind of in the same position. Um, he, you know, he really liked to use his athleticism and, and dunk all the time, and everything. He slowly he developed his jump shot, and that's you know something that I'm working on right now. So hopefully, I can be kind of kind of in that that category. When you started playing basketball as a youth, was anybody you looked up to in the league? Obviously, Michael Jordan. Um, um, when I was when I was younger, there was always a, a different player that I you know, loved watching. I was a big fan of Shaq um, when I was little. Um, I don't think I'm gonna play too much like him though. Mm -hmm. They were questioning your height. Mm -hmm. What did you measure? Six eight three fourths without shoes, and six ten with shoes. Oh, we did the height and measuring yesterday. We did um, like the vertical today, bench press, uh, twenty yard sprint, and um, agility, lane agility. Do you remember what you got in like the vertical bench? I don't know what I got in the vertical. I did twenty two in the uh, bench. Just really try to dedicate to myself to the game, especially um, any workout I was doing. I'm very serious about my workouts, and you know I don't like to play around. I like to get work done um, while I'm in there. But um, you know, a lot of this is work ethic I learned from my my parents and my brother. Watching my brother work when he um, was getting ready for college and all that, and it kind of rubbed off on me. How did, how did you find a trainer in San Francisco? This I'm sorry. How did you find a trainer in San Francisco? Uh, my t my teammate Ryan Wright transferred from UCLA, and um, he, one of his teammates, uh, Aaron Aflalo, uh, went to this trainer, and uh, he kind of hooked this up. I can really focus on my individual workouts, and then you know practicing on what I need to practice on, and then trying to get ready for next year and then this summer. Blake, do you have any conversation with Dudley? I did. I actually met him in the lobby yesterday, um, but it was just very brief. Um, I know my, my agents have talked to him. They have a good relationship with him. So, um, you know, I look forward to, to spending more time with him when I go to visit.